this first of all he started out as a tight end guys when 2004 he was undrafted free agent signed to the bills as a tight end y'all don't think he can play guard okay that man is the definition of versatile okay he's about to take the guard position and make it a position you guys have never even seen before okay <laughs> Welcome back to another video with me. Today I'll be talking about Jason Peters, okay? So Jason Peters is really the buzz. As usual, you know what I'm saying? Per usual for the Eagles. He is the talk of, you know, our town right now. So I have to get into this video and tell you guys why Jason, us re-signing Jason Peters is, was really like necessary, just necessary. Like the move was necessary. It's not as was it right was it wrong it was necessary it had to be done so stay tuned to the video so basically you know the eagles the streets of the eagles was really quiet for a long time we haven't really made any moves since the draft you know what i'm saying like it's been a really quiet time for us so when bellinger really tweeted out saying that you know some big moves were coming for the eagles soon Birds everywhere woke up, you know what I'm saying? We all started chirping and we're like, oh, what's the move? What's the move? What's the big move? Is it gonna be us getting clowny? Like everybody automatically went to clowny, but I automatically knew it was gonna be us signing um, Jason Peters, okay? Because once um, Brandon Graham went down and tore his Achilles um, and that guard position went vacant, I already knew we were getting um, Jason Peters back. Jason Peters been expressed that he wants to retire as an Eagle. So we already know he wanted to be with the team. He just wanted, you know, more money than the Eagles were really willing to give him. Mind you, he's 38 years old. Um, but I knew it was going to be Jason Peters that we were signing when, you know, the news hit the streets that the Eagles had big news coming soon. I was not disappointed at all that it was Jason Peters because Jason Peters is what we need right now, okay? So I know you guys are very, very confident in, well, not everybody. A couple people responded to my um, Eagles offensive line video and were saying, oh, you know, Andre Dillard is all this, that, and the third. Um, Andre Dillard had one season under his belt with Jason Peters, you know, on the field and having that guidance of a nine time Super Bowl champion left tackle of Jason Peters. We don't know what Andre Dillard can do without the guidance of Jason Peters because we all know that Jason Peters was a leader. So he had, okay, a, a couple of um, good games last season, but he was in his rookie year. We don't know exactly what he can do. And this is not the time to be coming in experimenting with Carson Wentz's blind side. So I know that Jason Peters is going to be playing guard, but just the fact that him, Lane Johnson, and Travis Kelsey are all going to be on that line at one time, three veterans, three pro bowlers, all going to be on that offensive line at one time, three guys that know the field, know the offense, they are really going to be that driving force of the offense. And he can, you know, Andre, get right, get right. You know what I'm saying? Andre can have time to prove himself. And if Andre Diller slips up, you know what I mean? We play, you know, Montez Sweat week one. You know what I'm saying? So if Andre Dillard slips up early, you know Jason Peters is going to be quick to grab that left tackle position back. So we needed Jason Peters really to keep that veteran force on the field. Yes, we have um, Lane and um, Jason Kelsey, but we lost so many veterans, guys. We lost Malcolm Jenkins. We lost um, Chris Long. We lost Darren Sproles. We lost so many veterans. Um, just over the course of this offseason that we needed to get Jason Peters back. And Jason Peters is going to be playing the right guard position, um, the, the position that Brandon Graham, um, you know, was holding down until he got hurt. So Matt Pryor was playing in that position in the playoff game. Mind you, Matt Pryor is coming to his third season. Um, but he, yes, he did well in that Seahawks game. But that's one game, y'all. Y'all know we can't be saying, oh, we're good, we're fine without Jason Peters. Let's get, let's go grab Cloudy because Matt Pryor had one good game against the Seahawks. That's one game. That was his very first start. That Seahawks game was his very first start. All we know, he could have been juked up all red bulls. It's so happy to be out there playing against Seattle in the playoff game. He just did extremely well. We don't know what he can do over the course of the season, but we know exactly what Jason Peters can do, and that is win. So the fact that we have Jason Peters for this one year, mind you, 38 years old, yes, he's getting old, but he is still extremely effective. Pro Football Focus had him ranked top five 
overall lineman last season, at the end of last season, he was 37 years old. I don't think one year really makes that much of a difference, especially in a guy as hungry as him. They had him top four in pass blocker at the end of last season. Come on, guys. That's the guy we need right now. We don't need to be worrying about Clowney or whoever else, you know, was in that free agency pool that you guys were thinking was coming to the Eagles. We needed um, Jason Peters. So, Matt Pryor, yes, he did great. You want your cookie? Yeah, you did great that prior in that one game, but that's one game. That was your first start. It's the reason why you were number one on the depth chart. So Matt Pryor can still come in and fill in holes as needed, and he can still have plenty of time to sit behind Jason Peters and, you know, grow and groom. And Jason Peters can keep his eye on Andre Dillard, and he can keep his eye on um, Carson Wentz's blind side because Jason Peters, okay, first of all, let me slow down. Because I'm seeing so many birds, and right now I'm saying birds in a negative sense, birds, as in clouds. I'm seeing so many cloud Eagles fans saying, oh, um, Jason Peters coming back at right guard, what's the point of that? First of all, you guys don't think a nine-time Pro Bowl left tackle, one of the hardest positions not only in the offensive line, but one of the hardest positions in football, period can slide over to a guard position where he has to be much less physical and much less aggressive. So the fact that he's going to be playing in a position that doesn't require him to be as physical and as aggressive as he is, he's going to elevate that position to the match, to the extreme, because he does have that aggressiveness and he does have that athleticism. So he's about to dominate that right guard position. And then that pressure will be taken off the left side because they'll be able to double team and do all that stuff that they can do between him, Lane, and... um. Jason Kelsey, all of those guys who've been playing together for a decade, all of those guys will be able to have be on the field at the same time and be able to come up with a billion different schemes. And they will be able to, you know, be so strong. They will be able to take the pressure off that left side and take the pressure off of Andre Dillard. And if Andre Dillard slips up, guys, okay, we drafted two linemen in the draft this season, okay? Behind, we have so many young guys uh, in the offense. Lane and Jason Peters and Lane, Jason Peters and Jason Kelsey are all on the tail ends of their career. So who do we have behind them? Driscoll, Prince, two rookies we just drafted. Don't even know what they can do. Matt Pryor coming his third year. Andre Diller coming his second year. Y'all really ready to hand this offense the lob over to these young guys? No, let Matt Pryor learn. Let him come and fill in and learn from these guys. Let Andre Diller play, but he has that security blanket of um, Jason Peters now. Um, so you guys saying, oh, Jason Peters moving to guard. Why? Because Andre Diller can still try to prove himself at the left tackle position, but he doesn't have to be that only guy there. He, We have a safety net in Jason Peters. And then Jason Peters, first of all, he started out as a tight end, guys. When 2004, he was undrafted free agent, signed to the Bills as a tight end. Y'all don't think he can play guard? Okay, that man is the definition of versatile, okay? He's about to take the guard position and make it a position you guys have never even seen before, okay? I'm telling y'all, the offensive line... Do y'all know what our office that have lot has done for us over these past couple of years? The protection we've able to give Carson Wentz, that weak, weak, weak wide receiver core that we had. That offensive of line is what breathed life into Carson Wentz and is able to give Carson Wentz all that time to come up with those plays with those poor wide receivers that we have. The offensive of line is what makes those young, young running backs, Booby Miles, look great. Do you know what I'm saying? The offensive line has done so much for us. That's not a position we want to play with right now, okay? So, Jason Peters, come on. Take your crown back. Take your position back. It was all cute, you know, when we were looking on the free agency board. Who we going to have that left tackle? We going to have Jason Peters back, okay? Okay? The Eagles were ready to cut that check to him. Once they knew it was ready, okay? So, Jason Peters is on a what? Let me look at his deal real quick. Excuse me, guys. Um, He's on a one-year, $3 million deal worth up to $6 million. So, we had about $26 million in cap space left 
before we signed Jason Peters. So now we're around 16, 19, depending on, you know, if he gets all his incentives and everything. So we still got money to spend. Relax, guys, relax. So yeah, we still have a good chunk of change to spend. Like I said, depending on how much incentives, um, what's his name? Jason Peters grabs, hopefully he grabs all because that means he's doing something right. We will have about 16 to 19 million dollars in cap space left. So we can still cut a check to somebody else, whether it's, you know, a running back, um, that edge rusher y'all so pressed to get. So we'll see. Um, yeah, but like I said before, you guys should have known, like, before, you know, we look at the JV highs and we look at that running backs, you guys should have known that once Brandon Brooks went down, I know I might have been saying Brandon Graham earlier, but you guys know I'm passionate. We got so many guys with the same names on our team. I mean, we got about three Jalen's now. We got about three Brandon's. So you guys know I'm talking about Brandon Brooks. But yeah, once Brandon Brooks went down, you guys should have known we were going to get Jason Peters back. And not only should you guys have known, you guys should have been happy. This is great news for us. Why are y'all acting disappointed? Like... You gotta handle the needs first before you can do all that fun stuff with adding extra bells and whistles. You gotta make sure the foundation is there. And like I said, Jason Peters knows this offensive, not even just the offensive line, the offense. He knows the offense like the back of his hand. Right guard, left guard. Hey, I don't care if you play a center quarterback. <laughs> Jason Peters knows the offense more than anybody. Jason Peters has been on the team longer than Doug Peterson has been calling plays for the Eagles. So you guys should be excited that we got somebody, a general scout, back on our offensive line. We got a lot of young dudes. We don't, we have depth, but we don't have depth with experience. Like I said, behind um, Andre Dillard and Matt Pryor, who are both young guys. We got Jack Driscoll, who we just drafted. We got Prince Tanega. Who we just drafted. I know you guys don't want to see them coming out on the field starting this season. God forbid that happens because if that happens, we got a major problem. Like I said, week one, we're playing against Chase Young. We're playing against Montez Sweat. We don't have time to play with these folk. The last thing we want to do is start off 0 1 because Andre Dillard was slipping up and you guys were so confident in um, Matt Pryor after one, one start. So welcome back, you know, Jason Peters. Welcome back. So glad to see you. Got that championship mindset. Let's get this last, not this last one, this last, maybe last ring for him. But like I said, he was ranked top 10 in um, offensive linemen last season. Top five offensive tackle. Pro Football Focus ranked him top five um, pass blockers. He still got it. I don't care how old he is. I don't want to see age is nothing but a number. What are those legs talking about? You know what I'm saying? What are those hands talking about? Hands still. Uh. But let me let me know what you guys think. If you guys have a lot of opinions when it came to this news, I don't know what you guys thought we were about to do. But you guys, some of y'all were disappointed in our move. But just let me know what you think. I want to hear you guys' opinions. You guys had a lot of things to say on my last offensive line video. So let me know kind of what you think. Because I do, we know we all got to be on the same accord. We all got to flock together and have the same process going on. So like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what's going on. All right, bye.